which one of you is Scottish? Good evening. Oh. We are Team Cambridgezella, which is uh, actually Alex Trebek backwards, a little Family Guy reference. Uh, but nonetheless, I am the CEO, Wyatt Larson, and I'd just like to start off by giving a few messages about our company. Uh, our company has definitely been through a lot of ups and downs, uh, a lot of good points and bad points. But one of the strongest things that we can come from this is that we are very flexible. We know how to go through these highs and lows and allocate our expenses as efficiently as possible and not waste any money while we're doing it. Um, we've been through hard times where we have an excess of plant and or a shortage of plant. And we're able to uh, maximize our production through any simple math terms and stuff like that. Um, overall, our team has been uh, very good with uh, creating credibility in the markets. Uh, all three markets that we're in besides the adventure market, we have uh, basically been in them as long as we have started. And from that, we've built our credibility and our brand recognition to the point that people know our bikes and know what we are selling and what we provide. Um, another big thing about our company is the fact that we uh, have been through ups and downs with communication. We have worked with multiple different groups and trying to figure out strategies and things how we would like to move <clears throat> forward. But nonetheless, we've been able to come out on top and continue to allocate our expenses efficiently in order to save money while we can and make money where money is, could be made. Um, a little overview, uh, our company really wanted to enter into a couple markets that had similar aspects. Therefore, we chose the kids' leisure and commuter markets as they required very low SCU to produce. Uh, we wanted to be able to produce mass amounts of bikes and sell them at very cheap cost in order to create profits. Um, through this process, we have learned that, sorry, through this process we've learned that um, it is very important to be out there for everyone and show them that you have potential in your company and show them that you can be a threat. That's hence the reason that we have been talked to and bought out or talked about being bought out by multiple different companies. Uh, but nonetheless, to go in and dive a little further, we're gonna have Nick here go over our cash flow statement, Ray next to go over our finance, and Braden looking forward to us within the future. So I'll pass the torch. So for our cash flow um, for 2028, um, our sales were 71 million plus, and um, what we actually um, had net profit is of you know 14 million. Um, we did not have any um, any money from investing and. Um, Dividends was, you know, four million and interest on the bank was eight hundred thousand. The majority of what was dispersed with our um, sales with our cash that we had was between our advertising and our uh, raw materials stocks. So those were our two big points right there. So, so if you just go back. Go back there. Okay, that's sorry. All right, so uh, for our income statement, our gross margins are 45 million, and our net income was 14 million for the final year. Um, this is the balance sheet, and uh, highlights on here is uh, loans to owed firms. We got zero. We have zero long-term debt, and uh, our liabilities. Our only liability is our corporate tax. Um, so then I'd like to go in and start discussing um, the reports on our past operations. 
Um, as um, Wyatt said before, I think one of our biggest strengths as a company was our ability to um, be able to overcome difficult circumstances and get back on track quickly and efficiently. And of course, one of the big ones was our surprise of being bought out by Team Fire Orange later into the simulation. And um, it significantly uh, changed our strategy and caused us to have a lot of overstock from plans we had had for a previous strategy. But we were able, within about a year, to figure out what we needed to do to change things up and get ourselves back on track and start getting ourselves the shareholder value that we were expecting to get. Um, probably one of our biggest surprises was just how many um, teams were bought out within the first few years of the simulation. And one of the things we would have wanted to do if we could go back is be more willing to invest early in another team um, just given by what we saw, how, if that could be effectively managed. And uh, then moving forward in the next five years, um, then we have two major goals. One of our best decisions previously was our emphasis on consistently redesigning our bikes in order to lower um, or the SCU needed to produce them as well as their prime cost. And this really aided us in situations where even if we didn't sell as many products as we believed we would have, we still got good value from what we did sell. And we want to continue doing that in the future to ensure um, that, we're, that we keep getting that same benefit. And then two, we also want to consider moving into the one market we have not moved into yet, which is the racers market. And one of our rationalizations for that is um, our first goal of redesigning and getting down prime cost and SC you needed to produce. That's a big thing for the racer segment so that when we, if we do produce those bikes, then we'll be able to get as much revenue from them as possible over a long period of time. Um, that is it for us right now. Um, we would like to um, hand things over to you if you have any questions for us. Yes. Yes. So do you think it would be smart to go into a high, like you were saying you want to go into racers, and that's very high quality bike, and the buyers have high quality, um, you know, lots of SU. Do you think that would be a problem with creating so many low quality bikes? Not necessarily. I think through the process that we've gone through, through these all the rollovers, we've uh, had the time to up our quality and distribution through our bikes to the point where we could have, if we were to take on the SCU needed to make those bikes, I believe we could produce a quality bike in the racer segment that would sell and meet customer specs as well. So then on the contrary, why did you guys have such high quality when you were producing such low quality bikes? It, it was kind of a slow building process. It was slow working up and up, and then as our quality gradually raised, our market share was influenced by that. Um, even though it's not a huge aspect, it was just kind of like the cherry on the top. We got a really good bike for a really cheap price, and that really helped us secure and lock down the market shares that we had. Yeah. Another big thing about our company, too, that I had not mentioned before is that kind of that brain touched on is we did redevelop bikes, and currently, uh, put our money into that to constantly lower our prime costs as well as meet the customer specs that were needed within the market. And that was probably one of our biggest aspects that really helped us lock down the market shares that we had and keep them to where they were. And our, our goal overall was to keep, besides our adventure market, was to have 25% or more in each of the markets that we were in. And every time we tried to, uh, we would try increasing advertisement and other expenses like that and that really wouldn't it wouldn't fluctuate as much, but when we redeveloped our products and had a redesigned bike, that really like secured our market share and put us to where we were at before. Yeah, and then um, we'd also like to ask, um, of course, um, Team Fire Orange isn't here, but um, do, do you have any um, particular questions for us about, of course, we had the buyout situation and you were a major part of that. Do you have any questions for us regarding that? Yeah.
You talk a lot about the strategy that you have prior to being bought out. What was that strategy? Because even communicating with Team Fire Orange, we had they actually were sure. put a whole lot of time and effort into communicating with Team Aha at the time because they were as well interested in investing into our company. Uh, and they had communicated with us and contacted us before, so we had gone through before the rollover happened and made a ton of changes in our production and our capacity and everything we were doing basically to meet standards with them. And then once we rolled over, we were purchased by Fiery Orange, and that completely threw off our entire plan. Had a ton of leftover units on hand, and everything was like super screwy from there. And we didn't find out about it until Monday yeah. after uh, Thanksgiving. We feel you over here. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I understand that, but they, I think they realized that and made the changes necessary because they, they didn't approach us in the same situation at all. They were, I actually really appreciated everything they did, their whole process, and I was really looking forward to doing business with them, working with them, but then we kind of got a curveball and saw something else. Because Team Turquoise, um, you gave up a market as well, didn't you, to make that deal work? No, they gave up their they race from They gave a market us. up to them. They gave up a market to them. I mean, that's huge. And I, right? I actually spoke with Monroe too and told him that through this rollover, we're going to lose share in our commuter value, in our commuter segment. And it would be awesome if you guys could swoop in and pick that up and you know, keep it on the same side of things. And uh, it didn't go as planned. Damn. 1%. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so, like, if Fire Orange or us had to reach out to you guys for a conversation prior to, do you think that would have changed? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Our shareholder, I mean, that that one rollover where we got purchased, <clears throat> our shareholder value was projected to jump ten dollars from like fifty nine to sixty nine, but we actually lost ten dollars in shareholder value. Went down to forty nine. So that alone not only had to do with you buying us out but it had to do with us having a whole bunch of leftover inventory a whole bunch of idle time a whole bunch of everything else because we weren't able to pursue the plan that we had originated so yes if you guys if we were to have been contacted before i believe that we would have been able to make up a situation that fit our scenario and we would have been able to su succeed a lot better okay. so go ahead so part of our strategy, I guess, well, and we, we didn't want to, like, no one wanted to blindside anyone fully, but we did hear talking of people and purchase you guys. Right. So naturally, part of our strategy was to try and outbid someone that was, because if they, obviously, if they had bought you out there, <coughs> they would have skyrocketed, and we would have been left sitting next to them. So, so apologies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just fully <laughs> accepted. Uh -huh. Along with that, like, I don't think that we knew, well, we didn't know any of that other stuff, that you guys had all these plans until after it happened. All we knew was that someone else wanted to buy you too, so we were like, oh, we'll just boost our investment a little bit, but we didn't know all the rest of it, and yeah, apologies, we didn't want to screw you over, we didn't purposely do that, but I do think, and I want to know your opinion on this, after they bought you out, and yes, they didn't contact you right away, and we made that same mistake, so we know kind of what the situation is, but your first emails back and forth were a little bit salty. And do you think that if you would have worked with them straight off the get-go and used the strategy you made with them with Fire Orange, it could have helped you guys? Our strategy was obsolete at that point. Yeah, and, yeah. and one of our big things I will say is that we we do we do regret um, that we weren't willing to um, put aside differences earlier and be able to make things um, work. Uh, we were all kind of in a high, high stress situation, and we do regret that. And we do feel like things could have turned out better had we been more willing to make some of the first steps um, to help kind of facilitate more communication between both Fire Orange and. So my question is, so if we were to have communicated with you the same time AHA started communicating with you, would you guys have told AHA that we were communicating with you? Yeah. 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 Yes. That was, that was our strategy going. And in buying you guys and giving money like the night of. So. And, and that's completely understand. Yeah. We understand why you yeah. <laughs> What if, what I'll, is, I'll, I'll say something here, here. sorry. <laughs> um, we, had a plan um, in place on how much we wanted to spend on a company, 
Um, so I just wanted to throw out like we were not ready to get in a bit anymore. Yeah. So um, even if communications would have gone, uh, I don't really see us going much more than than we originally. And I think we or Fire Orange bought it for like one percent more. Right. You yeah. guys did it's just barely, barely. More, well, so. yeah, you guys. It was a hundred and ten million, and we spent a hundred and nine. <laughs> so we did that. <laughs> Well, I think we all learned about communication. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick question. Um, had Team Fire Orange and Team Whitney Houston's asked you not to talk to a hop, would you have kept it close to your vest? It really would have depended on what their strategy was. AHA came to us with uh, how this would benefit their company as well as benefiting our company, and that they sold us the plan. And that really was like the pitch that made us want to pursue that plan. Uh, whereas if they would have came up to us with a scenario that demonstrated how they would benefit as well as us, I think we would have been down for either or, to, you know, based off which scenario was better in our situation. You know? And so, so I, you know me with my plan B's and plan C's, I mean this is a place where you really do need a plan C because these guys buy us, alright, there's our plan A, these guys buy us, um, there's got to be our plan B. Right? And how do we react to that? And through that process, we had heard rumors about Purple Cobras even being interested in purchasing us out. So we were kind of on the fence and a little weary about what we were going to do and sort of kept that in mind in the back of our heads with our strategy. But we also kind of didn't take much risks moving <coughs> forward in the beginning of the time. So we figured, you know, high risk, high reward. Maybe it's time to take this risk. We could be able to band aid gear after this if we need it. So we kind of just went for it and we're hoping for the best. Um, we need to keep moving forward and I do want to state um, there's a gallon of milk there and um, there's some donuts <laughs> that um, Kebert Zella brought to Team Orange today um, to express, and there was a card as well, to express their appreciation for Orange reaching out most recently. And you know, and I think that's just top notch, gentlemen. They didn't bring your donuts. That donuts right there. Yeah. If